Richter Custom says, okay, this is a very common question and it's a really valid question. He asks, how can you trust again? I'm scared to trust someone. Is it helps to, to learn to trust yourself first and foremost. So if a person, so if you, if a person goes through an abusive situation, right. And they come out of it and then they're understandably, they're scared, they're scared, they're scared to trust again. They're scared to go through that exact same thing again. And, you know, this time around, you have learned so much, you know, if you've learned how, how problematic behavior feels is a big, big thing. You know, it starts off, it starts off, there's always that feeling of confusion of wait, what, like, what, did, what did they just say? Like, did I hear that right? And then it's kind of followed by introspection of, is it me or is it them? Like, is that weird? Or is, is this me being overly sensitive? Or was that kind of rude or weird? those are like the two main things. And then it's followed generally by justification. Well, maybe, you know, he or she was like that because they had a, a long day at work or, um, they, you know, they got mad at me because I forgot to buy ketchup at the store or because um, it's their culture or because, you know, for whatever reason, we start justifying it. If you can identify the patterns of problematic behavior, and the more a person too learns about abusive behavior, the more you're able to describe it, the easy, then you're not, then a person's not, they're not lost in the fog and they're not kind of swinging at ghosts. They're able to more accurately pinpoint, actually, no, this is what's going on. Like, and this is why I have a problem with what they're saying. So, you know, my first book, which is called Start Here, you can find that on Amazon under Dana Morningstar. I go through, there's like 50, at least 50 different definitions. I describe all of the different types of abuse. I give tons of examples in, in both of my books that really try to spell it out as, as clearly as possible. Another really great book on specifically verbal abuse, which is oftentimes the most kind of covert form out there is there's a book by Patricia Evans called The Verbally Abusive Relationship, which I think it was just a fantastic book. And she really walks, walks through all that. So, you know, if, if you're in a situation, so let's go back to how, how a person feels. If you're in a situation that's causing you perpetual confusion, things are fine. Then all of a sudden, boom, things take a left turn and you're off in the ditch. And now you can't communicate with this person to save your life. And it's these conversations from hell, you know, or this person seems to kind of want to pick a fight with you. And maybe you're not even aware that they're picking a fight with you, but you're like, I don't have this problem with other people in my life. Like this person, this, per this relationship or this person brings out the worst in me. It's that kind of a feeling of like, man, I do not feel rage. I do not yell. I do not have the, this type of dynamic with other people in my life. Or if I have had it, it's only been with other, you know, hindsight being what it is, like it's been with other toxic people. And so kind of knowing that this is how I feel when I'm, when I'm around people that are, that when I'm being abused is basically what it is. Like if somebody is continually, you know, it's that crazy making, controlling, condescending, <sighs> diminishing, defining, you know, agitating, provoking kind of behavior that is a lot of verbal and emotional and psychological abuse, the gaslighting, the um, projection, that all of those are signs of, okay, this person is, is toxic. I've got to get away from this person. Like there is no being logical with an illogical person. So I've got to get out of this situation. And, um, you know, and I had talked about for, for me before my old boundaries were I would leave when I, there was abuse, addiction, adultery, or a really rotten attitude. If they were constantly critical and telling me all the reasons, everything I wanted to do wouldn't work. That was when I would leave. But even then it would be extreme. It would be very, I needed like overt abuse. Like if they were 
you know, hitting me or, um, you know, just verbally berating me, or if it was extreme, you know, if I had proof that they were being adulterous or cheating, it took extremes. The new me has gotten to the point where I leave a situation if it's perpetually confusing, if it's crazy making, or if it's, you know, controlling or condescending, or if they're treating me with like disdain, contempt, or hostility. Like those, those are my new criteria. And so that helped me to back all of that extreme behavior, which is good to have some deal breakers, but that was when things have gotten to that point, things have been going on for a long time. Right. So I backed things way up to that early, those early stages, those early emotions of, you know, perpetual confusion, crazy making, um, those kinds of things. I just, I'm out the door because I don't have those dynamics with anybody other than personality disordered people. So it's just, it's something I just steer clear of. And then that way you're not caught up in this. Is it me? Is it them? Who is it? It doesn't even matter. It's, this is not acceptable for my life. Like I don't do, I don't engage in relationships or friendships of any kind that are detrimental to my mental health. If it's causing me mental anguish, I'm out the door. There's too many people in the world that don't cause mental anguish to waste your time with somebody that does. So, um, so knowing, knowing that you know, you know how abusive behavior, how it tends to go down, that there's many different forms and how it makes you feel, and then really tightening up your standards. I would encourage people to seriously, like, use that as a guideline. If a relationship is, if it's causing you mental anguish, or if it's detrimental to your emotional health, get the heck out of there. So if you know that, then if things start turning that way, then you know, okay, I can get myself to a place of safety and sanity. I'm going to now start distancing myself from this person. So there will not be a time that you go through something this horrific because you know you've already ridden so much of a learning curve. There's not going to be all of this, this ongoing mental anguish and this wondering, can I fix them? Can they change? Are they a narcissist or are they only narcissistic? And is it bad? Is this me or is it them? Or is it like... All of that is resolved because you now know you have clarity on like what you want and what you don't want in your life. So that's, that's huge. So then it, then it's the shift of it's less about trusting them because people are going to be people, you know, and, and people are going to let you down because they're people. And so instead of us kind of, being so fragile, right. And being like, I just, I need, you know, I need to be able to trust you completely to not hurt me, which is going to set a person up to fail because like I said, people are, people are human. Um, and even if a person has good intentions, like there's a very solid chance that they are at some point going to behave in a way that's going, that's going to be insensitive or hurtful. But the difference is in a healthy friendship or a relationship, people talk about it. You know, they'll say like, you, this really crossed a line or this wasn't okay with me. The difference is in like a toxic relationship, nothing ever gets resolved. It's just, it's the Lucy and Charlie Brown at the football. Lucy promises to do things different and she doesn't. And Charlie Brown keeps believing her and he keeps going to kick the football and he lands flat on his back over and over and over and over and over again. So in a healthy dynamic, change happens, you know? People own, people own their stuff. They're accountable. They're like, wow, you know what? I, I forgot that we were supposed to meet for lunch today. And I'm, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you were waiting at the restaurant for 45 minutes. I'm, you know, I'm sorry like that. That won't, I will do everything in my power to have that not happen again. And then it doesn't become a pattern. Right. Or, um, oh, I told the joke and it hurt your feelings. And like, that was not my intention. I just, I thought I was, I thought I was hilarious. Right. So then they own it, but then they don't do it. Like they don't try to spin it back around on you and be like, Oh, you're too sensitive. You can't take a joke, whatever. It was like, Oh man, dude, I'm so sorry. Like I, that I, that was not, not my intention to hurt your feelings, you know, but now that I realize like that's a sensitive spot, like I, 
but I won't joke like that anymore. You see what I'm saying? So if you have deal breakers in place, then it's, then it's less about really trusting other people. And it's more about trusting yourself because all we, all any of us have control over is ourselves. And then, but that's, there's so much power in that because then you're, you're released, you're released from other people needing to behave in a certain way in order for you to feel safe and secure. And then of course, too, going slow. So when you're meeting new people, especially when you're meeting new people of going slow, and that's one of the, I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people, myself included, have had to, to learn is, you know, before we might've gone full speed ahead and we're like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm an open book and I trust people completely. I take them all at face value. And we might've been doing that for many, many years or decades and then boom, we crashed into this, this one person and then our lives were blown apart. And now we're terrified to trust people. But if we can learn healthier ways of interacting with people and slow things way down, because trust is something that's earned with consistent action over a consistent period of time, trust is not something that's just instantly given, then it makes trusting a lot easier because we're not feeling like, oh, I met this person online and I've gone on, you know, one date with them and what's wrong with me? Why can't I just, you know, I'm so afraid that they're going to hurt me and I've got my guard up and it's like, okay, well, actually that's a good thing because you don't know this person. So th th a lot of that feeling is completely appropriate, you know? So it's just, it's learning to slow things way down and realizing that, you know, it's, it takes, it takes a long time to really get to know a person and we don't even begin to scratch that surface until you're about 90 days in and, and to, and to, it helps to just to relax and be like, okay, you know what? We don't need to tell deep secrets immediately. We don't need to have deep conversations. We don't need to have sex. We don't need to get super deep. I'm just going to take things at a pace that I'm comfortable with and I'm going to get to know this other person and I will decide as I go forward. Because again, I think what a lot of people think is they, they're like, my ex was abusive, but that was an isolated event. And that, you know, most other people are out there are not abusive. And the reality is we don't know. There's a lot of other people out there that are abusive. And the only way to tell is with time. So it's a mistake to just think, oh, well, my ex was abusive, but this will never happen to me again. It's no healthy bound, healthy boundary. There's no, there's no shortcut around that besides just going slow and paying attention to how you feel and learning to assert yourself and um, kind of riding that wave. Cause uh, people can feel guilty. They can feel uncomfortable being assertive is it's a new skill. So it's awkward at first. It takes practice and, uh, you know, it's just, it's learning a very, it's learning a new way of being, but the more you can trust yourself to keep yourself safe and trust yourself to go at a pace that you're comfortable with. And here's, here's the thing too, with that, <clears throat> you know, that you're moving at a pace that you're comfortable with again, based on how you feel. So if you're going out and you're meeting new people or you're starting to date again or what have you is if you're feeling, you know, like that shaky, like butterflies of, and not good butterflies, like I'm talking like anxiety panic of, you know, I don't know if I can trust this person and I don't know, and I don't know. And, and, you know, you're having nightmares and all that stuff, all of that extreme anxiety, those are all signals to back up just back things up. So taking things at a pace that you're comfortable with is finding, getting grounded and feeling, feeling what it feels like to feel safe and calm, calm. That's a good, that's a good emotion. Finding what it feels like to feel calm. And so that there's a concept in that book, Psychopath Free, where he talks about getting a constant, you know, finding that person in the, in the book, he uses the example of his cat, how he feels around his cat. He feels calm. He feels comfortable. He feels, you know, he's not second guessing the cat's motives and, and whatnot. You know, for me, it's my brother. 
Like I feel calm. I feel safe. I feel secure. I feel like I can be myself. I don't, you know, I don't second guess his motives. He's a good guy. He's always been there for me. That's my constant. And so to find that one other person that can be kind of that grounding force of how, when you, when you're around this other person, how do you feel? And finding something that you feel safe and secure and calm around, and then kind of letting that be like your baseline. So if you're around somebody new or somebody else that makes you feel anxious and you're having night terrors kick up again, and you're having anxiety and all of that, those are all signs that something's off and that you either need to back things way up or you need to get away from that person. Generally, it means you need to get away from that person. But, you know, if it's, um, if you're fresh out and you're, you've got like your PTSD is just raging and you're feeling anxious around everybody, you know, then backing things way up. And I would encourage people if you're feeling that way to not date because your radar is, is all kinds of screwed up and it's not you, it's your brain. And it's going to take a little while for this trauma to process. So it helps to start off by meeting, um, meeting new people. If you're ready to start meeting new people in a, in a safer, less emotionally invested way. So meet, I'm a big fan of meetup.com or if you go to church or if you volunteer meeting people that way and in tuning inward. How are you, how are you feeling? How are you feeling around these people? And um, do you feel more anxious around some people than other people? Do you feel calm around, you know, who do you feel calm around kind of a thing? Because it can be really easy to be like, no, no, I feel anxious and upset around everybody. But at the same time, if you haven't been aware of what's been causing this emotional anxiety for decades, there's a very solid chance that you're surrounded by a bunch of toxic people and that it's like your radar is finally, like, finally, you know, we've, we've finally gotten through to them. Like these people are, are all toxic. So it's, it can be, it can help if you can find somebody that you feel calm around just to prove to yourself, like you do know what it feels like to, to feel calm and to feel grounded and to feel comfortable you know? So if you're on a date, backing things way up to where you're feeling comfortable, like you shouldn't have to, you know, justify stuff or have conversations you don't want to have or um, be put in uncomfortable positions because you feel like, well, that's what people do when they date or, you know, I just need to somehow get over it or, or whatnot, you know, move at a pace that you're comfortable with. You are not alone, you are not crazy, and you really can move forward and heal from this.